welcome to the weekly writing vlog. This last week I've been on kind of a break and I've kind of hated it. Like I needed Monday off and maybe Tuesday as well because I wrote 13k in three days and then edited and uploaded a 30 minute video. But after five weeks of writing and vlogging almost every day, like this week I just felt so unproductive and kind of anxious and stressed out. Like I felt like I, I was behind on the vlog and behind on book, but then I was like, no wait, I'm not doing that this week. <laughs> it was weird. So yeah, I'm like ready to be productive again. And I'll be talking a little bit more about my plans in this video. Last week I asked you guys to ask me questions and now I'm gonna answer a bunch of them. So let's get into it. So the first question I have here is, your process for outlining and drafting is so organized and specific. Do you have a similar process that you follow when tackling your second versus third versus fourth draft, etc.? I actually think that my process looking very organized and specific is a little deceptive because my actual process feels like chaos. I'm just the kind of person who loves patterns and charts and stuff like that, so I really lean into it. But like, I don't start with a pattern and write to fit that. I write something and then figure out a pattern that it naturally fits into. Like it kind of looks like I know what I'm doing because I'm very good at bullshitting and you know if someone has a chart and a graph then they know what they're talking about, right? Wrong. Source, me. <laughs> like my process is always changing and always evolving and always different from project to project. Like my Scrivener progress charts that were such a staple in this vlog series and that I'm still getting so many questions about even though I've answered this so many times and I started putting the answer in the description of every writing vlog. But yeah, I've been using Scrivener for like nine years and I was just like messing around and I sort of accidentally stumbled upon this feature like a month and a half ago. <laughs> like this is the first time that feature has ever been a part of my writing process. For this specific project, I think the main difference between my process for writing the rough draft versus my process for writing the next draft is that with the rough draft, I wrote that in Scrivener and I jumped around all over the place. And the next draft I will be writing in chronological order in Word. I adore Scrivener for outlining and drafting and it enables my jumping around, but I, I need to do a chronological draft for this next one. But yeah, that's pretty much the extent of like my process plan at this point in time. But I will sort of develop more of my process as I work on the next draft. And to answer the second part of your question, yes, I will be making videos about that process once I figure out what exactly I want to do. Next question is, how much of a break do you plan on taking between this draft and the next one? What are you going to do with that time? And how will you approach the next draft differently? So I'm actually not taking a super long break between these two drafts. I think I'm going to start the next draft on November 1st and kind of do it alongside NaNoWriMo. So like a two and a half week break. If I was jumping into like actual revisions and making real changes, I would want to take a longer break to kind of let those changes marinate and settle in my head. But I don't feel like I need a significant break in between these drafts because I'm not making any major changes. Like I'm just cleaning it up and adding a bit more depth because in my rough draft, I have bracket scenes where it's like, cool world buildy thing goes here. And now I have to like figure out what that cool world buildy thing is and like do it. And that kind of leads me to the next part of your question, which is what do you do during that break period? And for me and this break period, it means developmental work. Like I did zero developmental work before starting this project. So I had to figure out a lot as I went through it. And there was also a lot that I didn't figure out because it wasn't like immediately necessary, but it is something that I need to revisit and flesh out. So, you know, my world and side characters feel real. I'm also going to be catching up on reading because I read like one book last month while I was drafting. As for approaching the next draft differently, I just mentioned that I was going to be writing this one in chronological order. That is the big difference. Also, this draft is going to be a little bit slower. It's going to take a little bit longer because the first draft was all about embracing the suck 
and this draft I don't want to suck. Like, I know it's not going to be great, but I do want to clean it up enough that it doesn't suck. <laughs> the next question that a couple of you guys asked was, what are the Hogwarts houses of my main characters? As I've previously mentioned, there are two main characters in the story, and I've very intentionally designed them to be opposite in a lot of ways. So if we're talking about, like, just what one house they would be sorted into, it would be Gryffindor and Slytherin. But I like hybrid houses, so I wanted to lean into that a little bit. So one is like a Griffin Puff, and the other is a Slither Claw. Next question, is your book more character driven or plot driven? You know, my first inclination is to say plot driven because it started out as like a plot point that I wanted to work with. And the plot is very much a driving force in the story. But the two characters have kind of taken over and like their relationship has become like the focus of the story. And someone else asked about inciting incident and my inciting incident is just them meeting. Like one is an existing student at the school and one is a new student at the school and they meet and that kicks everything off. So I'm gonna say character driven, but I'm hoping that you know, it's something that readers would even debate about. Like, is it more character or plot? I don't know. She did both so well. <laughs> the next question is, are there any LGBTQ plus characters in your book? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, yeah, I have very little interest in writing or even reading, for that matter, a book with zero LGBTQ plus characters. Like a book with only cishet characters in this economy? hard pass. Next up, I got a handful of questions about music. And I love this because I love music. And I have a lot of thoughts and like habits involving writing and listening to music. So I do want to make a full video talking about this in a lot more detail. But this question about music stood out, asking for a song for each act. Now I'm not gonna give one song for each act. Or maybe I am. What I'm gonna do is share four songs that I've been listening to while working on book and that I kind of associate with book. But I'm not gonna tell you what part of the story they're from, you know? I might be doing one song from each act, or these four songs might all be like for the first four chapters. You don't know. You'll have to find out later. They sing for the best. My reputation's never been worse, so you must like me for me. Don't know what I do. we gave off all the love we had and lost the next question is what was your favorite part of this process and do you think you would have made it without the accountability of the vlogs and I'm gonna answer the second part of that question first because I have an immediate no for that. I do think I would still be working on the story and I would still have like the same passion for it but I, I definitely would not have pushed myself to stick to a schedule if it weren't for the vlogs and the accountability here. As for my favorite part of the process, um, I, it's hard to choose like one part because just like overall, this was such a fantastic experience and I had an amazing time. Like I love the story. I love how easy and fun so much of it was to write. And I also really loved vlogging the process. You know, this is, I think the fourth, book that I've like vlogged a lot of the drafting process and it's been my favorite of all of them. Mano Rambo 2012 is a close second but like this was just a really great experience all around. The next question is what's harder daily or weekly vlogs and do you have a solid genre now that you've completed the rough draft? Absolutely daily vlogs are harder. Like they do come with a little bit more reward because I get like positive comments and encouragement and attention every single day because I'm uploading every single day. But having to film and edit and upload every single day is tough. Like honestly, I don't know how I did that back in 2012. I was doing NaNoWriMo, I was uploading 10 minute videos every single day that month, and I was working as a waitress at Applebee's almost full time. How did I do that? I like can't fathom that right now. As for a solid genre, 
Uh, which, by the way, I feel like a lot of you guys might have missed my week two vlog because a lot of you guys just asked, like, will you ever tell us the genre? And I talk about genre for, like, five minutes in the week two vlog. Like, genre is in the title of that vlog. So if you missed that, I recommend watching that because I, I do talk a lot more about, like, time period and, like, what genre blending is going on and setting and stuff like that. But if I had to choose, like, one solid genre, I would say say science fantasy, which isn't like a hugely popular term, but I have heard it, so I'm going with it. You know, my story has sci-fi elements and fantasy elements and science fantasy works. Also, kind of related, this comment about genre is interesting because I will mostly deny for book, but this isn't a bad guess because I have written this book. This is study group. I know I told you guys study group was a rom-com. I don't know if I mentioned K-pop. I definitely didn't mention the main character was bi. So yeah, that's interesting. Get out of my head. The next thing that a couple of you guys wanted to know was about titles. Do I have one yet? And I don't, not really. I have no idea what to actually call this book, but I do have two fake titles that I've been calling it. And the tragic part is that I can't even share the joke titles with you because they're spoilers. One of the fake titles is what I've been calling the book, like in my head. And I would love to actually call the book this if it weren't a spoiler. And then the other joke title is like just a pure joke. It's like a play off of another YA book title. And I wish I could tell you because it's funny, but it's a spoiler. The next question is, how do you refer to your characters without names? <laughs> Naming things is really difficult for me, so I use a lot of placeholders. Like for a while, the villain character was just named villain, like with a capital V. It would be like, blah, 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 said villain. Or I had to write a scene early on with characters who didn't have names, so they were friend one and friend two. The school that my characters go to is currently just called Academy. Like, there's no name for the school. I just refer to it as Academy, but I need a real name for it because it's not like the Academy. It's not, it's not like that. I need a name for my school. So yeah, basically I just use a lot of placeholders, like friend number one, teacher, academy, store. Although I did do something when I started writing this book because I only had names for my two main characters and no one else had a name. So I was like, I need placeholder names. And I started writing down names of musical artists that I like. And then whenever I needed a name, I just pulled something from that list. So like there's a character named Ariana after Ariana Grande. And there's a character named Brendan after Brendan Yuri. Florence after Florence Welch, Florence and Machine. I named characters after Lady Gaga and Lord, but like Lady Gaga's real name and Lord's middle name. And to be clear, these characters are nothing like the artists they are named after. Like it's just a name. And they're all side characters and I'm not super attached to any of these names. So they could totally change. So yeah, I do use a lot of placeholder names and I, I will just like pull names from objects around me. Like if a book is sitting next to me, I might steal that author's name as a character if I need to on the fly. But I did spend a very long time figuring out names for my two main characters and I could not have started the draft without figuring out those names first. Like the characters had to have names to be real characters. And I really only spent three days kind of planning and developing the story before I just started like drafting it full force. And of those three days of prep, one entire day was just spent researching names and trying to find names. You know, I had to find two names that I really liked because they're gonna be like the most used words in this book. I had to make sure the names weren't too similar, but that they kind of went together. I ended up vetoing one of my original name possibilities because it didn't blend well with the other name for like a cute ship name. And like, of course it was something that I had to obsess about. Next up, I got a couple questions about my structure structure and I love that because I love story structure so much and like I want to make a whole video about the three act nine block 27 chapter structure and sort of variations on that because even though I start with that base for all of my stories I don't think any of my current stories are in that 3927 format it really is just like a skeleton base that you can change to suit your needs. So yeah, I do want to make a whole video about that. But briefly, I started with the three act, nine block, 27 chapter 
outline method and I doubled the chapters because I was doing dual point of view and that was the approach that I wanted to use. You don't necessarily have to double like the plot points in the chapters that way, but that was what I did. So I had three acts, nine blocks, and 54 chapters. And then I realized that the three act thing wasn't really working. So I decided that the story kind of broke more naturally into four parts. So I basically have 14 chapters in act one, 13 in act two, 13 in act three, and 14 in act four. But really in my head, because I don't like to split the midpoint chapters, it's more like 14 chapters, 12 chapters, two chapters, 12 chapters, 14 chapters. So I did change from three act to four act, but the act divisions are kind of arbitrary and just really for me and for like my framing of the story and my like sectioning off parts of the book in my head. Because even though I switched from three act to four act, the chapters all stayed the same. Like the 54 chapters never change. Where you divide your acts does not have any effect on the story beats. Like the story beats are the same no matter what. And then the act divisions are just kind of how you want to look at the story and kind of how the story divides into different parts. I might not be explaining this well, but I'll try to figure out better ways to say these things. And I do want to make that structure variation video soon. The next question is, will you do an updated Scrivener video? And can we get a peek inside your notebook? Yes, I will do an updated Scrivener video. I've been meaning to for a while. It's just a really big video and it's going to take me a lot of time. I have to create a whole like dummy project that I can use as an example because I can't make an updated Scrivener video with a book or else you guys we'll see too many spoilers about book. So I need to like create some kind of dummy template example story and then I can make that video and it probably won't happen for a couple months. And I also want to make a video like showing you guys everything in my notebook. I love sharing my stories and like information about my stories. Like I've done two separate videos for two separate outlines where I like went through my entire outline and showed you guys the entire story and like how I plot with all spoilers and details. So yeah, I am already planning like a notebook flip through video that I'm gonna make uh, like uh, a little bit after book gets published, if slash when book gets published. Like once book is out in the world, I cannot wait to share like all of my drafting behind the scenes and like original outlines and like this changed from the rough draft to the current version. Like I can't wait to do shit like that. It's just uh, gonna be a while. <laughs> the next question is, have you ever queried? And the answer to that is yes, three books. Back in 2009, 2010, and 2011. Obviously, I did not sign with a literary agent during any of those query processes. I did get some partial and full requests and even some agent feedback, but the general consensus was that I was talented as a writer, but my storytelling, my books weren't quite at like publication level. Uh, but yeah, it did kind of hit me hard, like especially with the third book I queried because my critique partners were like, Kat, this is great. Like this is, this is gonna sell. I can see this being on the shelves one day. Oh my God, you're gonna be published. And I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna be published. And I got pretty close. Like some of my rejections were just, I enjoyed this, but I didn't love it which is like such a hard rejection to get. And then I kind of removed publishing as an option for myself for a couple years, which kind of brings me to the next question. So let's get into that. How does this book feel different from your previous works? And have you ever considered publishing one of your previous books or possible plans to publish this book? So first about how it feels different. This was definitely the easiest and most fun drafting process I've ever had. And this was also probably the drafting process that I was least prepared for going into it. Like I was almost pantsing it. I was outlining, but I was outlining on the fly. And here's the thing. I've spent most of the last two years working on older projects like Storyteller and Study Group, which were originally written in 2012 and 2014, I think. And like, I'm so familiar with those stories because I've been working on them for years. They've been in my head for years. And this story was so new and I hadn't like worked on something this new in so long. And like the last few years, I haven't even tried to draft anything new because I've been like working on revising existing projects. 
So drafting this new project really let me see how much I've grown as a writer in the last few years. Like I knew as I was working on Storyteller and Study Group that I was making those two projects better and stronger, but I didn't really realize how much I was just like leveling up in writing overall. So yeah, that was like a really cool difference. And for the second part of the question about publishing plans. Okay. So yes, I am probably going to be pursuing traditional publishing with this book when it's ready. Though I am terrified to do this for many, many reasons, which I actually want to make a whole video about. Like I have a whole story time acting like you're my therapist, getting some things off my chest kind of video planned about like why I thought I was never going to publish for a while and why I'm still kind of uh, about publishing. Though my conflicted feelings are just about publishing, not actually writing. Okay, here's the thing. I loved YouTube, you know, and then YouTube became more of a job for me. There were obligations and deadlines and pressure and money involved. And now I don't love YouTube anymore. I mean, I, I still kind of love it, but I also kind of don't. I have a lot of complicated feelings for YouTube and a lot of anxiety and stress around making videos. And basically, I just didn't want that to happen with writing. I never questioned my love of writing. I just questioned whether or not I would ever pursue publication because I thought that the publishing process might affect my love of writing. Writing and publishing are two very different things. So my basic thought process was, hey, I love writing. I love it a lot. I could never give up writing, but I could give up publishing, just like remove that as an option for myself if it meant that writing would stay pure and joyful and I would continue loving it like I do. And my stance has shifted since then, but yeah, that is a whole other discussion video that I'm planning to make pretty soon here. But yeah, I think that is just about it. There were a lot of questions, so I'm sorry if I didn't get to yours, but I will do another Q&A like this soon. Uh, there will be a video here next Monday. It might be a reading vlog because I'm planning to do a lot of reading in the next week. or. If it could be a writing video, you know? I might do like one of these chatty writing discussion videos, one of the videos I've mentioned in this video that I need to make, or I might do like a vlog type video about how I'm preparing for this next draft. Either way, having a weekly posting schedule is like keeping me more productive, so I'm gonna stick to the new videos every Monday thing. But yeah, that is it for this video today. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a wonderful night and I will see you next Monday with another video. Who knows what it'll be? I don't know. Tune in. Bye.